All right, guys, Fula coming to you with another video. I hope y'all are doing well. I hope y'all are living your best life. I hope that you guys are finding your way in this thing we call America or wherever you're listening from. You know, I don't know where you're listening from. So I, I was on a bingo paddle, right? And um, the thing is, is that you know, I was, um, I was, you know, I told them that like, yeah, I don't really be crying. I told them I don't, I haven't cried. And I should have reworded it and said, you know, I haven't cried as of recently. You know, I should have said that I, I, I don't think I, I don't think I said I'd never cried before. I, I don't think those words came out of my mouth, but the, um, I guess the impression or the assumption was that I never cried before, right? That was the assumption. But the real, the truth of the matter is I don't cry, okay? I don't cry. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. And I'm going to go into the reasons why, you know, this, this thing, th this set of, this code of conduct is very important to me. And... I'm going to go into the reasons why I still follow it and why it's like kept me alive to this day, uh, especially when you're living in Los Angeles. Now, in case you don't know, the Fulani, you know, the tribe I belong to, um, you know, we are a pastoral people. We are a nomadic people. And sometimes we are a settled people. You know, it really depends on circumstances. I can go into all types of things, um, you know, because you, you have different groups of uh, Fulas and you have different subgroups of Fulas as well. You know, what I mean, I mean, me personally, uh, uh, in, in my in my case, since I'm um, Torodbe Fula, I believe that maybe perhaps like like centuries ago. Or at least like, a, a, yeah, like maybe a couple of like hundreds of years ago or so that perhaps we were other people. But then just recent, just like just as time progressed, we adopted uh, Fulani language and Fulani culture and we became Hal Pular and we became Torodbe because there's different there's different like theories. Like some people say that, you know, we come from Egypt. Some people say we come from Ethiopia. Some other people say that we come from a Jewish origin. You know, there's different theories. And, um, you know, all these theories, I don't know. You know, I believe there may be some truth to them. But I will say that, um, you know, across the board with every Fula, no matter if you're a full bay um, Torodo, no matter if you're a full bay Bororo, no matter if you're a full bay um, Gida, no matter if you're a Sulabawa full, full bay, no matter what kind of full bay you are, you're always gonna have a code of conduct. And we, and that code of conduct is called Pulaku. And I'm gonna go into detail about Pulaku right now, since I said I was gonna do a video about it. And, and you know, um, as a result of Pulaku, in the United States, I can say I've been looked at as an anomaly amongst, um, you know, many, especially Western women, especially Western women, because there, you know, there is a notion that you know a man is supposed to conduct himself in a certain way to their liking now I'm, I'm saying this in this in this like generation um and i'm saying this in the current relationship dynamics that we have going on right now right because at, as it stands right now the balance of male and female is that you have the strong-minded women that you know have a certain you know a certain way about themselves right and you have these weak men right 
And I'm not saying all women are like that. And I'm not saying all men are like that. But because me, I stand for like, I, I hold my line, you know, like my Pulaku, like my Pulaku dictates my actions. My Pulaku dictates how I move. And I'm going to give you the reasons. I'm going to give you the, the codes of Pulaku. And then I'm going to give you like how they apply to my life and how they may apply to another um, fool, uh, fool's life who's in the diaspora as well or is uh, expatting somewhere else. Now, one of, one of the codes of um, Pulaku we call Munyao. And what Munyao means is patience, that you have to have patience. And it doesn't mean that your patience is simply waiting for something. Your patience means that you're simply um you're you're simply basically uh i want to say going through the motions you're simply making things happen but if you don't see instant results you're not you know i mean you're not um you're not losing yourself and I'm just going to break down all of the all of these things and give like examples in in like and give real life scenarios that I went through that that's the reason why I hold my line. You know what I mean? So with Munyao, it basically means that, as I said, you have patience and uh and with that patience, you you basically take your lumps. You take your lumps and you don't, because here's one thing about it. What I've learned is that many people don't care about your problems. Many people do not really, will not really sympathize with you when you're going through certain things, right? They'll be like, okay, I'll pray for you. And they'll do it at a distance. That's why, like, when you're in a tough spot, if someone, like, when I was ever in a tough spot, when someone ever asks me, is there anything I can help you with? I just said, just pray for me. Because um, with that, with with the the Moon Yao also comes stoicism. With the Moon Yao also comes, I want to say, a poker face. Okay, and so also with that comes bearing suffering silently. Okay, suffering in a way where all you're doing is pretty much complaining to God. That's who you're complaining to in regards to that. So, for example, I can't lie to you. I've lost so many people out here. I've lost family out here. Like, as I said in one video, I've lost I've I've lost my uncle in um, ICE. You know, what I mean, I've lost um, several people, several friends out here. Um, you know, I've been. I've been, um, I want to say, uh, done dirty in the past. I've, uh, you know, had to, I, I've nearly got killed by a police before. I've, um, had to like run from police. And one thing people say about me is they're like, if we if you were going through something we wouldn't never know by your stoic face like your face shows no emotion you know what i mean and that and this is going to uh come to uh my next um my next thing about pulaku um one thing about pulaku too is that you know we have something called uh you know uh what we call it we call it sim tende 
And what Simtende means is just basically shame, basically dignity, basically um, like what I what I was explaining earlier. So for example, like let's take an example. If a girl does you wrong, like 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 for example, w one time like a girl did me wrong, like they she did me very wrong, right? She um she she like let's just say what she did, it like people were surprised that how I reacted to it because of the simple fact that they thought I would I would like do other things like you know how you see on YouTube right now how you see people exposed like it, for example one of the popular trends on YouTube right now is that you see these guys what happens is they catch their baby mamas or they catch their they catch their girlfriends cheating okay and what they do is they expose them and they put it on YouTube, they put it on Instagram Live, they do all of that. They say, you dirty bitch, you this, that, and the other, you a hoe, you for the streets, and things like that. Me, simply, I just walked away and didn't say a word. I just, I, I walked away, didn't say a word, cut her off cold turkey. You know, that's what I did. You know, and that's when I made up my mind that after, like, dealing with her, I'm like no more Western women, you know. I just like pretty much went cold turkey. I cut her off. I didn't do. I, she never ever heard from me again. Once I got wind of what happened and things like that, I just like pretty much just cut her off. Said nothing. Didn't fuss about it. Didn't scream about it. Didn't do nothing about it. Right? Because if I would have reacted in a way that we see some of these people react in. And let's just say, let's just say if my mom or my dad were there, but hypothetically speaking, let's just say if they were there, then they would look at me like, you done lost your damn mind. Are you serious, fool? Like, you, you, you're crazy. You really are, you really are batshit crazy for doing that, for show in, in essence, showing your ass. So with, with, with that, with that, with that, uh, Simtende, with having Simtende, with having modesty, with having like shame, it keeps you from doing things that would probably like be on some almost like borderline clown shit. So a lot of these people, especially a lot of these Western women don't understand that, you know? So what it comes down to is you may carry yourself, for example, with, with Pulaku, you may carry yourself in a respectful way. You may treat people with respect and things like that but you will never ever let that person know if they bothered you or not you know what i mean you would never express like discontent with their actions and things like that you know only on certain occasions you would do that but i'm going to get into that I'm going to get into that uh, with one of the points of Pulaku. So, you know, the way you carry yourself, for example, is you never let you never let people know if they bothered you. And I think that's what bugs a lot of um, these. That, that's what bugs a lot of these women here. You know, they're so used to like getting a rise out of guys. They're so used to having like pretty much having guys by the balls. They're pretty much used to having guys like just going circles from them. But me, I, I can't compromise my dignity, you know, and I won't compromise my dignity. 
So we're supposed to be stout and stoic in that regard. So you'll never catch us like if 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 he's a fooler, you know, you'll never catch a fooler like like be like simping. You know, you'll never catch a fooler simp. You'll never catch a fooler like kiss a girl's ass. You'll never catch a fooler like really like, you know what I mean? Pour his heart out to a woman You know what I mean You'll never see that because it's part of our tribal code We look at those things as Like you're you're showing that you don't have no dignity You know what I mean So this is why we do it And another thing too Is when it comes to like shame and things like that as crazy as this sounds, I try my best not to eat in front of people. And I try my best not to drink in front of people either. And the reason is twofold. The The first reason is that, like, you know, um, it's like, you know, you're on the go or something like that. And, and, you know, you're just like whipping out food. It's just like, damn, like, you couldn't wait. You know what I mean? The second reason is someone is always watching and you never know if you're going to come across someone who's less fortunate than you or who may not even be able to afford food. And here you are just eating in front of his face and drinking in front of his face. You're thinking nothing of it because in this society, it's like, well, you know, the reason why he's homeless is because he ain't working hard. Or the reason why he's homeless is because he didn't do something about it. That's that's what you're thinking. That's that's what the thinking is in the society. So I think the opposite way, and it's like, okay, well, you know, this dude came on hard times. I don't know what happened with that dude, but why would I rub it in his face if I'm passing dude and I'm stuffing my face? Or I'm drinking something. So I try my best not to do that. Okay, and that comes from the shame and the modesty part. Another thing too is, as I said, if you cry in front of a woman, or if you cry in general, people are going to look at you different and people are not going to like um, look at you in a way, they're not gonna respect you anymore. Especially a woman, you know, especially if you cry in front of a woman, it's, it's just uh, honestly the, the way relationship dynamics are, it's just not going to work. You know, um, my dad, you know, may God have mercy on him. Um, you know, With his marriages, I, I never saw my dad cry and I also never saw my dad argue with his um, with his wives. I never seen them argue. I never saw them get in a shouting match for the simple fact that he knew that, okay, if I do this in front of my kids, then, you know, they're going to take that example and think it's the norm. Now, I don't know if they, you know, shouted at each other in front of uh, kids and stuff. Or, or, I mean, excuse me. I don't know if they shouted at each other behind closed doors. I don't know, you know. But I just go based off of, um, you know, what I saw coming up. Yeah, I never saw, never saw my parents argue. Not even once. Hell, I never even seen my parents kiss. <laughs> I never saw my parents kiss, you know, but lo and behold, they sprouted out hella kids. So that's one thing that throws these women off too. And throws off a lot of people is the simple fact that, you know, I don't react to things. You know what I mean? Like you have to keep composure in every given situation. And we have a saying in, uh, in Fulani uh, is roughly translated that dignity is like oil when um, when it's 
it's spilled, you can't get it back. So one thing I will say too is that, you know, when I did lose people close to me and things like that, yes, I shed tears, but I was never wailing and nobody ever knew I was crying. Even I could be in front of a person and they wouldn't know that I was like shedding tears, you know, because it's just a simple fact that like, you know, we couldn't do it. Coming up with my dad and stuff, he wasn't having that. You know what my dad would say? He would say, take that to the prayer rug. You know, if you ever cry he, or, or something, my dad would be like, yeah, take it to the prayer rug. Man. I don't want to hear it. He's like, just take it to the prayer rug. That's what my dad would say. Dead serious. So that's why, you know, you're looked at. That's why they talk mess. Like, I'm not going to lie. On that panel, they were talking. Like, one of them was talking so much mess about it because of how my, my mind is set up. You know what I mean? And so rather than, like, insult her, because that, again, if I were to insult her, that would be breaking Pulaku. You know, because it, 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 it goes back to that thing about shame, you know. So another thing, too, about this, and, and there is so many layers to these things. I can go on and on and on and on. OK. Another thing about, uh, you know, modesty and shame is one thing about Pulaku is it, it really pushes self-sufficiency. Begging is one of the most lowest things that you can do. If you are begging, it's just like receiving what you're begging for is actually worse than the begging. You know, believe it or not, you know, unknowingly, our leader, Amilcar Cabral, He even said, you're never satisfied if you're still receiving aid. He said that. Those were his words. So, it goes down to the fact that you have to be, you have to, like, work towards some self-sufficiency. And so, that's one of the things that comes down to it. You know, you can't be begging. You know, because... And so that's why, for example, like that's why for me personally, the only time I will put my cash app up on my social media is when I drop my merchandise. My merchandise is coming very soon. I will put my cash app up there to take orders, but that's where it stops. I'm not going to ask for donations. I'm not going to ask for those things. Although technically, I guess you can say like asking for donations is not really begging, so to say, but you're still asking for something. And that's a no-no with us. Okay. So another thing too with Pulaku is uh, we have something called Gase. And what that is, is it's basically you have respect for other people. You know, you just have general respect. You have a mutual understanding with people. You try to communicate with people and you try to um, you try to, you know, just get along with your fellow man. That's part of Pulaku. OK. And that 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 helped me a very great deal coming up in L.A. Listen, when I first got to South Central L.A., you know, my thing was, I was like, damn, like, you know, I'm in South Central. You know, I, and mind you, I got here when it wasn't being gentrified, right? So, I was like kind of different from a lot of the older African generation. I did my best to get along, be respectful with everybody surrounding me. Okay, that's what I did. I never ever stuck my nose up at anybody or 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 carried myself in a certain way. 
that sh that would make me feel like that I had contempt for other people. I never did that, you know. That wasn't something we did, you know. So, that helped me a lot. I mean, and it got to the point where, you know, people took me um, under their wing and showed me what the shit is really about that go down. There. And so, you know, instead of me being like, instead of me being like, oh, these people are crazy. These people are clueless. I was like, okay, well, this, this is kind of how it's set up to go due to the simple fact of like the history of this country. And, you know, all I got to do is pretty much uh, play my part and be respectful and be like, you know, just be stand up, you know, and so that that plays uh, a big part, too. So we have something called um, also, uh, you know, I want to say it's called Hakilo. And what, what ha Hakilo is, it's just basically like wisdom. It's basically like forethought. It's basically like you think things through. You're, you're, you're thinking about, okay, well, how, how is this going to benefit me? How is this situation going to benefit me? Or how, what are, what are going to be the consequences of a situation? What are going to be the, uh, the upside of different actions that you may take? And so that's another thing that helped me navigate through here. You know what I mean? Because I often, like, although, you know, you may, for example, you may run reckless, right? But then you're still thinking about, like, an exit strategy when you do run reckless. Or you're thinking about, okay, there is a plan and there is a method behind my madness. And if this plan fails then I have another, like one, I have another one that I've already thought of, you know what I mean? You, you so that, that plays a part as well. So, um, last but not least, you know, and this is one of the most important things basically, uh, is that you, we have something called Tanade, and what Tanade is, is basically courage and being hard working. Okay. So with that being said, you know, you, you, you get to a point where, for example, for, 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 for a, a guy like, for a guy who is like, like myself who's probably going to get married when he gets back home and things like that um your whole life is just basically consumed with work and different types of work um for example you may do your studies that's considered work you may be doing like a, a grassroots operation that's considered work you may be involved in some kind of sport or some kind of athletics that's considered work you're just working and as far as the courage part comes from you, you that's it's just the simple fact that you can't be you can't be a, a um, you can't basically be soft you basically have to like like stand on your stand on your two and so Sometimes that courage may involve you doing something that may be considered outside of Pulaku, but it, but you're doing it because if you don't do it, then you're going to be like, you'll be looked back. Like people will look down upon you. For example, um, if you see like, for example, if you like, if 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 a um like let's just say you run into like a proud boy or something like that let's say let's just take a hypothetical situation let's say if you run into a proud boy 
and then that proud boy is pressing you. And at first you try to be cool, you try to be respectful, but they don't understand respect and they don't understand that. And the only result of the only other option is for you to, um, uh, you know, take flight on them. Then you have to do that. You know, it's, it's just no other way around it. And so, um, with, with that being said, you know, the, the, I take Pulaku so serious and things like that because if, listen, if I didn't take it serious, then chances are like, I may be, I may have been put in a trap by some of my African homeboys, like some of my African homeboys, you know, whatever their intentions were, you know, that's not for me to judge. But what happens is they get into these traps with these women, you know, granted, most of the time it's for papers, but you know, um, it's, it's on a like case to case basis. You know, sometimes they're serious and they really want like, uh, you know, a, a good relationship, but because the, the cultural values are so different that, um, they end up falling prey and end up getting put through a, um, a whirlpool. But here's a book I got, you know, my uncle, uh, he sent this from France. Okay. And, and this goes to show how important it is to him for me to maintain this. This is why he, he, he even said that, you know, yo, don't, don't forget who you are. You know what I mean? And so, again, it comes it comes from that point. It comes to the point where, you know, pe people like, for example, like um, I think the girl on the panel said, oh, yeah, that's why you're going to grow up um, like that's why you're going to grow old alone. That's why you're going to like th this, that and the other, because the simple fact that like I don't give my power to like women. And I don't cater to women the way that most, not all, most, I'm just saying most, like I, I don't cater to in that way to the way that they think that they should be catered to. And so that is the reason why, you know, that that is the reason why I have a lot of, um, I guess you can say a lot of hate. That is the reason why they despise, like a lot, I'm, I'm gonna be real with you many western women despise me like i'm just gonna be real um and you know it is what it is but i'm the thing is i'm not gonna compromise my my shit for their liking that's the thing like you know someone said this best and i'm gonna end this video with with this with this being said um uh they said that you can't put your expectations of me on me. And so that's the mistake they make. You know what I mean? As long as I'm doing what I have to do, as long as I'm taking care of my family uh, back home, as long as I'm moving towards my purpose and moving towards my goals and my objectives, I'm good with that. You know, I'm, I'm completely fine with that. And I don't like, um, I don't need to explain to anybody you know what I mean? And the reason why I don't need to explain to anybody is for the simple fact I do have Pulaku. You know, I do have Pulaku and I will keep Pulaku until I die. Until I go in the grave, I, I will keep Pulaku. And then one thing about Pulaku too is that um, the, good, the, the good thing about it is that you keep your love life and you keep your marriage life to yourself the the only reason why you would tell other people about your marriage life is for counsel but you don't just go out and flaunt it like how a lot of people do like oh girl he bought me this oh girl he did that or go girl, girl you don't do that okay and so that's another reason why like you know what i mean that's why we do what we do you know, and, you know, I'm, I'm just going to end it with this. 
I mean, Pulaku has existed for generations, and if if something like has not died out, and this is just my opinion, if something has not died out and it's been passed down from generations to generations, there's obviously some kind of wisdom in that thing that hasn't died out. But that's all I got for the next, uh, that, that's all I got for this video, guys. Leave your thoughts and leave your comments. But if you want to know, th this is why I am the way I am, you know, is because of Pulaku, you know. And with that being said, Pulaku signing out. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments, and jot on it.